we like what about now not yet almost okay we are we're live hey everyone how's it going happy thursday night and welcome to kitchen table talks presented by talk 11. um so this is this is our third correct yeah, third episode third. three episode of this live series so for those of you just catching it for the first time um we usually run live events but since all of this has been going on in the world um we decided that we needed to bring you know a glimpse of a glimpse of talk 11 to the online world and it was something we were just we were dabbling in before but uh, we threw ourselves into it. So this is Kitchen Table Talks. Um, and tonight we have with us two very special guests. But we'll, before we introduce them, just a reminder, if you're watching the replay, make sure you hit hashtag replay and let us know that you're watching so we can send our love your way. And please feel free to share this. Make sure you like. And by all means, ask questions as we go along. Let us know you're here watching. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. So I'm Tara Baltimore. It. And with me is... Hi, Matt. Hi, I'm I'm Matt Capuchetti, the co-creator, co-host, uh, and sorry, I'm still working on my technological skills here because I can't find our live video for tonight. I'm trying to share it as well. Um, that's okay. I'll do that while we do some introductions. Chantel, Fred, how are you guys? Hello. Hi. Doing pretty Fred, good. Fred, you're still on mute. <laughs> Yeah, I apologize. Yes, hi. How is everyone doing? Good. So, yeah. Chantel Dietrich, um, you are a registered social worker, psychotherapist, integrated healer. You're also my therapist. Yeah. Um, so, thank you so much for coming on. We will have a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff to talk about. Um, and thanks for having me, Fred and Fred Babby, a longtime friend and and. Uh, Cohart and a mortgage broker with Safeguard Financial. You've been you've been doing this what 15, 12, 15 17, years now? Yeah, it's it's SafeBridge Financial Group and it's been yeah. uh seven um, 17 years now that I've been in uh, as an independent mortgage broker. All right. Um so some crazy shit happening in the world as we all know, which is why we're here. Yeah. Um Fred, why don't we start with you? What, sure. like, there's just, there's a ton of, I'm sorry, before I, I, I would do that, um, if anybody watching has a question for Chantel, uh, for Fred, for Fair, or myself, by all means, please um, write it in the comments. Yeah. Um, hey, there's the video. Hey, <laughs> hold on. Um, write it in the video, in the, in the comments, and um, we'll do our best to kind of follow the questions as we go and ask um, when it's appropriate to do so. Fred. Um, yes. A lot of a lot of crazy shit's happening right now. Um, unemployment's through the roof, um, which has caused people to not be able to pay their rents, not be able to pay their mortgages. The government stepped in and said, "Okay, well, you know, uh, perhaps we should have some deferral programs for those people that can't make those those payments." Um, can you in a thousand words or less kind of give us what's actually happening and what it actually means, who can actually help and if it's a help at all to anybody? Absolutely. So yeah, uh, it's difficult times. We've had a lot of uh, response to, you know, the, the COVID situation. Uh, I think a lot of them are work in progress, uh, meaning that they were announced without really any understanding of how it was going to be implemented. So I think a lot of things uh, we have to be cognizant and patient with that, but lenders have stepped up in a very great way, our major banks and other financial institutions in, in Canada, and they've come up with uh, some great programs to help people that are in tough situations. Um, and uh, each bank and each situation is going to be uh, determined on a case-by-case -case basis. So don't listen to your neighbor, call your lender, figure out what works for you not what somebody else will do and never assume that you won't be covered or there, there's something not there for you. You won't know until you ask. So I really encourage people to do that. Uh, the government as well has uh, brought out uh, even for landlords and people that own rental properties as we do see uh, renters 
not being able to pay, there are programs that are in place from some lenders. Uh, and really, it's worth the call. It may take you two hours in the queue, unfortunately, but within five minutes, that peace of mind may give you that comfort that will allow you to sleep uh, knowing that your bills will be paid on time. Uh, there are some uh, different applications of each program. So again, each bank is going to do it differently. Some are deferring payments, some are deferring principal payments. And again, uh, just deal with that. Also, there's a lot of other government programs from uh, EI, even for individuals that are self-employed and so on, that I really urge everybody to take the time to read the information or reach out to us and we'll be more than happy to provide you all the links uh, and go to the source. Uh, too many people I think are listening to uh, the noise of other people that don't really know. So a little bit of information can be a very dangerous thing as we know. So uh, you know what, it, it's, there, there are ways to be, to be helped here, but do also realize that this is for people that are actually affected by COVID not people that were already in a bad situation. That is, it may be a chance that you won't get it uh, mm -hmm. if you are still working full time and so on. So again, it's really take the time and effort to, to look at that. But I think that's a, a, a very uh, big point, but the lenders are there, they're trying to help and we'll go from there. All right. Yeah, I think that's really great advice is to actually talk to the people that are offering the programs and the people that are providing the information and not just getting your information from social media or random articles or you know from your neighbor or your mom because she saw something on CP24 or whatever it is. I think when it comes to a lot of this stuff, we need to go to the experts. We need to take the time out. Um, I know I, I've talked to a lot of people, even myself, we've waited on the phone for a really long time, but it's as easy as putting it on speaker and just letting it do what it's gotta do. And then talking to the people and getting the information so that you don't feel overwhelmed or misinformed or any of that kind of stuff. So I think that's a really great point. And speaking of experts, Chantel, um, what's going on? So some stuff that Fred's talking about is resonating with um, kind of what I'm seeing is like the impact of social media on people right now. Um, which social media has always had an impact on, on us in positive and in, in negative ways. Um, right now, because we're all kind of isolated at home, people are wanting updates, they want to know what's going on with friends and family, uh, news, different things like that. Um, and a lot of people maybe not even trusting the news and trying to find information from different places. Um, understandably, a lot of people are going to social media to get that update. Um, and unfortunately, there's a lot of fear that people are all putting out right now and people are posting more than ever. Um, and there's a lot of um, misinformation and a lot of information that just can really overwhelm us and our uh, kind of emotional response. Um, we're all designed to cope with a certain amount of fear in our lives. Fear is a normal thing. Fear responses that support us um, when, when there's a, a threat. Um, and sometimes there's threats that are, you know, an imagined threat, and then there's a real threat. And right now what we're facing is a potential real threat. However, um, a lot of the imagined threat is actually like potentially causing people um, a lot more emotional challenges um, because they're now dealing with the thoughts of what could happen. Um, and of course there is what is happening and there's all the, the stuff that could happen. Um, so what I suggest to people is yes, go to people that have the proper information for what it is that you're looking for um, and deal with what it is that you can control right now. Um, rather than overwhelming yourself with all the things that are outside of your control that are just kind of stories at this point, bringing it back towards what is within my control and what are the next steps I need to do to manage that part of my life. Yeah, I think that's, that's huge. And I've, you know, had conversations with a couple of people about, we can't control what's going on. There's really not much we can do other than listen to the people that are telling us, you know, to stay home and to stay safe and to be smart um, and continue with adapting to our new normal and being home and, you know, transitioning and pivoting and businesses and that kind of stuff. So that's a really, I think that's definitely some great advice for people. But, and so to that point though, like what if this new normal is you are someone that is normally spending eight to 10 hours a day in your workplace, 
your your kids are at school and now all of a sudden you you are blessed with the opportunity to have this additional time with your family and your kids and your spouse but it's driving you fucking crazy mm-hmm. and not because you don't love your spouse or your kids or 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 you're you know you're that disappointed about not being able to go into work um but just because it's not normal like so yeah. so what are some of the things that that we can do you can do to kind of reduce this stress signs we can look for to say you know what i'm not handling this well i need to talk to someone i need to get out and do something for myself like can you just yeah talk about that yeah yeah, yeah absolutely and you know you sp- i've heard a lot of people speaking this same kind of thing that you know they're there's maybe a sense of gratitude that they're able to be at home with the people that they love and all these kinds of things but then there's the other side and i think first of all it's important to recognize that most of us when there's a huge change in our lives and a lot of things changing at all at once, we're not going to be able to handle it very well in the beginning. Right. It's not like yeah. you're prepared for this. It was, and also it's not a choice, right? When humans are presented with something that's kind of forced upon them, um, they can feel really disempowered. So first of all, you know, having compassion for yourself and going easy on yourself to not think that you, you know, you have to be functioning at the same level that you were before. Right. I, I think a lot of people, especially for people that have kids at home and they're still trying to work from home, um, they're trying to still do those things to hundred percent of their capacity. And that's going to be really hard to do right now. We're yeah. adjusting to what this looks like. Um, and transition times are always a little challenging as we get our bearings straight and try to figure out, okay, well, what does the new routine look like? Um, you know, how do I manage this, the schedule for myself and my family and dealing with the, the fear and all of that stuff on top of it. Um, so a, a lot of times when I'm meeting with clients, you know, they want, they want to just fix the problem, like make the problem go away. Um, and a lot of times we just can't do that, but we can bring in a little bit more compassion and, and kind of lower our expectations, um, either on ourselves or on the people that we're living with. Um, and that's like the first thing is if we can kind of recognize that this isn't easy. We don't have a roadmap for this. You know, yeah. there's no, not really anyone that's gone like, you know, it's not like we can even ask our parents, like, how did you deal with this? Because they right. haven't dealt with it. Right. And that's why there's a lot of people putting stuff out on the internet. We're trying to like find the answers, but it's new for all of us right now. Um, so what's mm-hmm. going to be helpful for one person is going, isn't necessarily going to fit for someone else either. So I've seen some articles saying, this is what you need to do, or this is what you need to do. And it's like, well, everyone deals with challenges differently and we're experiencing a grieving period right now we're grieving the loss of these experiences that we used to participate in daily and all of a sudden they're all kind of taken away so there's a a natural shock experience that happens with that so with a grieving process um we all have a different way of coping with that so um something i want to speak to also is that what people's typical coping strategies are also could be limited right now. So people that usually would get out, um, you know, go for some drinks with some friends or maybe even work, you know, was a little bit of a break away from Mm -hmm. stuff going on at home. Like, you know, all that's kind of taken away and we're kind of forced to um, be with ourselves a little bit more. And that can be really hard um, if we are not used to being with our feelings, right? We're kind of quite busy a lot of the time as humans in this modernized culture, go here, go here, right? So when everything's slowed down and we're just, we're left with some of our like thoughts and anxieties that were probably already there even before all this <laughs> yeah. and then adding this on top of it. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to feel a little overwhelming. So we have to recognize that that is normal um, and you're not less of a person for be feeling challenged by this. Um, you know, if you're feeling overwhelmed, doesn't mean that you're not handling it well. It's just a natural response to what's happening. So, um, I just wanted to say that first. Um, and then to, to recognize if you're, if something is just feeling off for you, um, and again, that can look so differently for different people, right? If you're feeling a bit more angry than usual, if there's more sadness than usual, maybe if you're feeling really joyful all the time, there might be something that's just kind of like, I need to feel this and experience it. 
Um, so there are a lot of things that are helpful for our mental health in general, no matter what's going on in our life. And some of the things that are happening now are kind of forcing us into a situation or, or seemingly forcing us into a situation that can trigger anxiety and depression. Um, staying inside, you know, not socializing. Usually we, we suggest these kinds of things to support people's mental health. So um, I, I would recommend doing what you can, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you can get outside a little bit, you know, of course we want to maintain the social distancing, but if you can go out, on your backyard, go for a walk around the block, or even just sitting on your front porch um, to get outside a little bit. Please don't feel like you have to stay only inside your house. There, we can move outside of our house even a little bit, um, you know, as long as we're maintaining that social distancing. Um, and calling up friends, checking in on family, you know, just saying, hey, I, I just need to talk, you know. Um, and if you have something that I want to say is for people that are still able to access benefits through work um, to make use of that by connecting with people that are like a social a registered social workers, a psychiatrists, there's a lot of different kinds of supports out there. You can go on psychology today or other resources like that um, to connect with someone um, to support you with this, because something that we have to be aware of is that there can be emotional stuff rising up right now, unrelated to even what's happening with the COVID situation. So unresolved emotional challenges that were already there can be kind of exposing themselves, and themselves, especially as we're maybe trapped inside at home with family members that, you know, maybe if there's dysfunction in our relationships, abuse rates can go up and all these kinds of things. So remember, you're not totally alone. There are still people out there that you can talk to. Um, and if you're just not sure of how to access that, um, ask, you know, asking someone like me to at least point you in the right direction. Cool. Yeah. Um, thank you for that. And like, yeah. there's just, there's so much uh, like around this whole thing. I suspect we might be on a little bit longer than a half hour, but um, <laughs> so Fred, yeah, I mean, as, as far as your profession is from Chantel's and I mean I think it I think it has a lot of corollaries and, and just just totally. what you guys were saying and, and speaking specifically to like your CP24 and your uh your talking heads on TV that really don't know uh what they're talking about when it comes to the mortgage market and they're just you know they're repeating things and if you repeat falsehoods often enough they become fact yeah. And a lot, and not a lot of people take the time. Uh, not that they should, because you know this is what we do. Uh, but they don't take the time every day to understand where the mortgage market's at and so on. So, like a lot of people have been calling me lately to say, "Hey, rates are coming down. Rates are coming down," which is in fact a misnomer. Rates have in fact been going up for the last month. They were coming down prior to this uh, COVID situation really hitting us. But every time there is a big interruption in the market the banks themselves have to insulate their their business to keep credit markets going. I know mm -hmm. not everybody likes that, but the fact mm -hmm. is if credit markets dried up, we'd all be in a lot bigger hurt. Uh, so it's really, uh, you know, the most important thing about any civilized society is a strong banking system. And uh, it's the devil you knew as <laughs> I guess uh, the devil you don't. So uh, in that situation, a lot of banks have had to increase the spreads that they're charging uh, on these lower rates that you hear Bank of Canada, Bank of Canada, but that's to remain liquid in the market so that you can actually go get lending, go get a line of credit or a credit card or even another mortgage right now. Otherwise, they could just shut off everything if they didn't. Yep. So the yep. rates are in fact a lot higher. Variable rates, even though the prime rate has come down significantly, the discounts on prime have been in fact been taken away altogether. Uh, a lot of lenders just offering prime now or prime minus 0 0.10 or a prime plus 0 0.20. So it's really, uh, again, that's where, you know, having part of the information is, is a dangerous thing. And, you know, talking to a professional, either somebody uh, for your mental health, like Chantel, or for your financial health, which I think a lot of times is tied to a lot of these issues you're talking about, mental health, abuse, et cetera. Yes. Um, you know, and I'm not trying to say that, uh, <laughs> that I do anything for that particular point, but what do we do to try is help people with problem solving and we do help them to walk them through what their situation is because too many people, again, 
go to their neighbor say, well, what was your situation? Well, they don't have the same job, same info, same anything. Yeah. And they're trying to say, well, my friend got this. Well, your friend also makes $200,000 more than you. So yeah. we really have to compare apples to apples. And too many people uh, would rather lie to themselves or, or, or perhaps, you know, uh, think that they can do something they can't. And a lot of times it's in fact the exact opposite. They don't do things, they don't think they can get something done that they actually can. Uh, and I think to put somebody in a better financial position is always very helpful. So, you know, it's about reaching out figuring yeah. out what's available to you and if if it's not a good fit then don't go for it but at least you know you have options and you don't feel or maybe you only need a short-term fix or remedy that there are many out there uh and you know there there's one for almost every situation so yeah. just take the time yeah. call the professional and that's all i would really suggest call your mortgage broker yeah. uh, somebody that you trust in in the financial and Fred, with with that being said though like in in these times of uncertainty and and um fear mm -hmm. out of the last 10 phone calls you've received how many times have you paid have you played therapist that is that's, that's very true uh that happens i would say yeah it's at right, least over 50 percent yeah, uh, right. if, if not more i've had the same conversations a few hundred times in the last three weeks uh, and it's not that I don't want to have the conversation. I'm more than happy to have that. But a lot of times, yeah, it's putting people's minds at ease because I think we all need to, you know, throw some calm and, uh, you know, depending on what uh, news feed that you do get, uh, you know, you've got one uh, that is very doom and gloom and everything is about, oh my God. And then you're watching this ticker and number of people infected, number of people dead and all these things. And, and then you just shut the TV off because yeah. it's not going to change. Yeah. I really think is a lot of the strength and speaking to living at home with a three month, three and a half month old daughter uh, can be challenging. And I know in the first uh, mm. week or two, it was, it was a real adjustment. And now it's really like, you know what, I'm going to get what I can get done. Uh, but a, the most important thing is her. That's why I do this. That's why I work. And I try to work around what, uh, you know, her and my wife are doing or whatever she needs, if she needs to sleep. So, yeah. you know, I really just think, you know, try to be the calmest head possible and, speak to somebody that can can help you out whether for support for financial yeah. support for investment yeah. support you, you know go to that individual i really do think that there is a direct co correlation between someone's financial health and their mental health Absolutely. because there's so much shame still in the money world right mm -hmm. so much shame around you know i've had to remortgage on my house or i'm in debt or i've already got this line of credit or whatever it is so uh, people try to hold back on the information they don't want to ask too many questions maybe you know they're ashamed to reach out to a financial advisor or to um you know for support in all those areas so i think being able to provide people with the right information and doing things like this and having these open conversations people can now hear this and go oh, okay you know it's not just me sometimes we feel like we're the only ones in the situation where for the first time in a really long time most people are going through the same thing. So it's connecting mm -hmm. everyone together and showing them that, you know, we're all here to support and to give you the right information. So this uncertainty of like when things are going to go back to normal per se, mm -hmm. as we kind of transition back to that, Fred, you know, what are some financial signs and things for people to look for, or maybe, you know, ways that they can protect their money right now, the money that they may have, or, you know, good ideas like, on an investment standpoint or a second mortgage standpoint or whatever the case is, maybe, you know, two or three really vital tips for people moving forward now. Well, I think the biggest thing is a, I'm not a finance, I'm not a financial advisor or and or planner. Right. I'm a mortgage broker. Just want to <laughs> verify yeah. that. But, yep. but from that position, it's, it's really about uh, making those calls. If, if you're going to have a tough time, call your credit card company, call, call your other individuals, you know, all they can say is no to you, but at least you can look at it saying, you know, what is it smarter if you have unsecured debt at, uh, you know, 20%, 2499, like a lot of these credit cards, you know, then maybe if you do have equity in your house, maybe, maybe it is something to, to look at, perhaps getting a, a home equity line of credit through your existing lender or refinancing your current mortgage for now, even for a short term to put you in that better scenario. And or, uh, you know, if you know, you see some issues coming forward, you know, refinancing to take out a little bit of money right now uh, to be able to do that. Again, I don't 
uh, want people to take on more debt than they have to, right. but sometimes it's it's a redistribution of your debt from mm -hmm. one bucket to the other because it's all the your total debt. So totally. it's really about you know that mentality of understanding. I, I know you want to pay off your house faster, but you're not going to pay it off faster if you have fifty thousand dollars in unsecured debt because and yeah. everybody keeps them in separate lanes, mm -hmm. which yep. is is by far the worst thing you can do for yourself from a in paying interest point of view. Sometimes, yeah. you know what, you, you say, hey, I've made an error. I've maybe have overspent. I maybe shouldn't have, you know, done those extra things or taken that extra trip. Well, you know what, you've mm -hmm. done it. Don't kill yourself about it. Don't get mad about it. It's okay. Every single person, every single one of us has done something foolish like that. Yeah. Uh, some of us more often than others. I have never, <laughs> I have ne I have, I have never done that. Yeah, so so that's what I'm just saying. Like, you know, look at that. Sit down pragmatically. Look at things. Look at your scenario, but look at it early. Don't don't try don't to wait. keep on pushing backwards because once you do, sometimes it's too late to get anything done. Yes. Or the alternative is so expensive that it, it it's you know it's, it's it's really hard and saddening for me to have to tell people that. Had you called me 30 days ago, 30 days, uh, you would have been okay. So if but, you are having an issue, just to, call somebody. But to yeah. like to that point as well those people have also been sitting there likely losing sleep stressed out of their minds right. for the last 30 days because they didn't know what to do or what they should do and they had all this anxiety right so like i, get, I think the takeaway message there is pick up the phone like you pick up the phone call fred call Chantel, call me call farah like don't yeah. sit there and lose sleep or turn to uh, you know excessive drinking <laughs> like yes. just yeah you know and and as fair you said earlier the shame like yeah. understand that like we're all in this like big shit storm together and we all know people that have been laid off or lost their jobs or um don't know how they're going to pay their mortgage or their rent this month and 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 just reach out right it can be um, fair. It can be scary to face it, you yeah, know, whether yeah. it comes to our financial issues or our emotional issues. And we've kind of been trained to just, you know, push it away a lot of the time, distract and distract. And, you know, this is, this is an opportunity to face some of that stuff. You know, we're being shown a lot for a reason. Um, and I know it's scary. I've been scared to face some of my own stuff, my own financial stuff and mental health stuff. Um, and, you know, sometimes you try and it doesn't quite go the way you want, but don't, don't give up, you know, like keep, f wait until you, f you might, you might find the right person if you just keep trying or calling back or whatever. And then it can be such a relief when you finally face it, you know, the longer we avoid it, the worse it kind of gets, you know, it doesn't really yeah. solve anything. So the quicker that we can just face that, um, or even ask someone to support you through that and say, I need to call the bank right now can you just sit with me or you know anything like that to help you feel strong enough to face some of these things um it can really be a relief when you've just felt like you've you know taken some control of your life right yeah it, i understand it can be so crippling we just you know turn to all these other things to just distract but that's really just kind of uh, making the situation worse unfortunately um Chantel, the other thing i wanted to talk to you about was so kids right so this yeah. is kind of uncharted territory for for all of us mm -hmm. um and whether your kid is you know three years old and has an idea about what the world and what's <laughs> happening and, and now their world is different mm. or your kids are in you know grade seven and they can't go and play with their friends or your you know son's in grade 12 and now is facing you know the the, the fact that there may not be a graduation and you know college or university might be kind of a little screwy moving yeah. forward like how do parents deal with that how do parents sit down and have these conversations with their kids so that they have a little bit better idea of what is actually happening yeah um i know that that the answer to that question changes a little bit depending on the age of the child yeah. because you know um using the language that they can understand and not overwhelming them with the information that they don't need to know um you know it varies depending on their age but in general i think it's important that we are honest with ch with children without um overwhelming them with our own fears and anxieties yeah. um but 
letting them know like, this is what's going on and supporting them through the emotions that come up through that. I think a lot of parents (laughs) understandably don't want their kids to go through any pain or suffering, sadness. You know, that's, we want to protect children in general from that. Challenges in life are a normal part of the human experience. Right now, we're collectively all going through something, um, but children and people are faced every day with challenges, right? Their own illnesses, illnesses of family members, people that have passed away, um, you know, and the whole slew of anything that could happen in a child's life, disappointments and all these kinds of things. And rather than trying to shield them totally from that, it's actually better that we have honest conversations with them and prepare them for, you know, the challenges that the world brings. And so to allow them to feel whatever it is they're feeling, you know, and validate their feelings that, yeah, like if they're feeling scared, if they're feeling disappointed, just to be there there with them through it um, Mm -hmm. and to invite them to, if it's possible to come up with some solutions as well, right? So given these parameters, um, you know, if they're able to participate, if they're even for the young kids, if, you know, as long as they're able to respond in some way, giving them some choice uh, is really helpful. And the older they get, allowing them to have a little bit more choice that, and choices that work for you, right? You can either do this or this, or do you have any ideas, right? And you come to a compromise together. So um, helping them be a part of making the schedule. Um, you know, helping that, like allowing them to have a little bit more say to what's going on. So they don't feel totally powerless and, uh, like nothing's in their control. Um, I think that that's just in general, like whatever child's going through, I find that that can be, um, a really helpful strategy. Um, and then another piece too, is (laughs) again, lowering the expectations around like the homeschooling side of things. I know that, there's a a want to continue to homeschool. And, you know, if you're able to do that, then that's fantastic. If that's without, you know, outside of your range of what you're able to do, it's okay. You know, kids are not going to be told failures if for, you know, a few months, they're not getting the same education that they were getting in school. This can be a great opportunity to, again, provide them with different kinds of learning opportunities. It doesn't have to be the same stuff that they were learning in school. So, you know, collectively we're we're all going through it. It's like, you know, I think there can be a lot of shame of like, oh no, I need to make sure my kids, this, this, and this is up to speed. And, you know, I think just right now that's their emotional wellness is a bigger priority than, you know, some of the academic stuff. So supporting them through the emotional sides of things, um, allowing them to have a say, I think, allow that to be a little bit more of the priority to take the pressure off. Yeah, Yeah, I agree. And as a parent, and I have twin boys that are, um, they're almost seven. So they understand, they know what's going on. They know that they're not going back to school. So they have questions, but my husband and I have always had open conversations with the kid, kids, because I don't want them to feel sheltered. I don't want them to feel, you know, out of the loop. I want them to know exactly what's going on, who it affects, why we're not going to school, why dad's working from home, all that kind of stuff, because they have these questions. So I might as well answer the questions for them. So we've answered all the questions without the fear, without the madness, just there's a little change in the world right now. We're home. Let's make the best of it. And, you know, the homeschooling part and the pressure on parents, it comes from as much as I love social media, but it comes from that highlight reel, right? Of social media where people are go, look at me, look what I'm doing with my kids. Look at all of this. Look at all of that. You know, here are the activities that we've done. And I'm like, whoa, like that's a lot. And even as a parent myself, I felt overwhelmed and I don't usually overwhelm myself when it comes to that stuff, but the addition of everything else that was going on. So now I'm like, you get, So for us at home, it's more of the kids that have a routine in the morning, just so that they can kind of, I have my own morning routine and it's more so teaching them to have a morning routine and, you know, make themselves a priority and their brains a priority. So they read for 15 minutes. They do 15 minutes of spelling, mostly because I don't want them to forget how to write because they're only six and a half. And then we do 15 minutes of a fun math app. And then the rest of the day is really whatever they want to do with, you know, a limited amount of of screen time or else my kids just dive right into NBA 2K20 and like, I can't talk to them for hours. (laughs) Um, So, but yeah, so as a parent, it's like, we just have to roll with, I'm not a teacher. I wasn't trained 
in that field. So I don't expect myself to be a teacher to my kids. It's more so like, here's what we've been dealt and we're just going to figure it out day to day and see how it goes and roll with the punches. So that's kind of what we've been doing. And some days it works. Some days I go crazy. Um, but (laughs) most days we're good. I knocked over my daughter's blocks this morning, this afternoon. Mm, She deserved it. Out of (laughs) Parent rage. Oh, she deserved it. <laughs> what did she do? <laughs> I just no, I'm kidding. I didn't knock my. I I didn't knock him over. No. Um, <laughs> speak, Farah. You had something you were going to talk about in terms of boundaries. I thought that was an interesting point. Yeah. So, a lot of people, like we said, this is not normal for them to be home all the time with family or spouses or girlfriends or boyfriends or whatever your home situation is. How do you have a conversation with someone to explain your personal boundaries? Mm. My husband, my husband and I, we have, you know, fairly pretty open communication. So we know, I know my boundaries. He knows his boundaries. Like we know we need space here and there, but some people it's hard for them to have those conversations because they feel either selfish or whatever the case may be, or, you know, it may not be taken well. So maybe some tips on how to have those conversations and how to set those boundaries to protect your own energy while you're all in a space together. Yeah. That's a big question. (laughs) (laughs) I work with people a lot through how to uh, set boundaries. We, we, uh, you know, collectively we haven't really been taught very well on uh, mm. how to set boundaries and how to communicate effectively. We're all still learning how to do that in many ways. Um, so, you know, this can be practice for that. You know, I think in general, like something that I discuss with people is having a bit more words along with the communication. So instead of just, I need to get out, I need to get out of here, you know, you're driving me nuts which Mm -hmm. maybe what's, you know, what we're feeling, um, you know, that, that could cause someone to feel a a sense of rejection and it can cause a bigger problem than what we intended. So if we can just add uh, add a few more words into the situation, into this conversation of, you know, (laughs) I really love you, but I need, I do need some time for myself so that I can be more present for you. And mm. it would be really help me if I could just say, go for a walk on my own right now, or just hang out in the other room. Maybe I'm just going to go listen to some music in my car. Um, but I look forward to coming back and being with you. This is to mm. help us, you know? And so adding in some of some more of those words or, you know, and that's something that we're all developing. To, it's, un, it's important to recognize that we may not all feel like we have the capacity to do that in the moment because we can get overwhelmed by our feelings and just kind of react um, based on what's going on. If that does happen, we can always come back and explain, you know, once we've calmed down and taken our break and done what we need to do we can come back and say, you know what, don't feel like I handled that the best I could take some ownership and responsibility and sit and say, I really needed a break. And you know, I didn't communicate that great. You know, I'd love, I'd like to work on this some more. So if in your partnership, you can make that part of the dialogue or, or even bring up the conversation of boundaries before it's like needing to happen, like immediately, right. You know, recognizing, Hey, so normally we're not together this often. Um, it can be really healthy for, you know, couples, children, whatever, to have some space uh, from each other, just people in general. Um, so can we have a conversation about how, what that can look like? And let's decide together on some things that we can, we can do and maybe some signals that we might have for each other to allow for that time and space and agree that we're not going to take it personally. It's just um, a, a necessary thing for our mental sanity. <laughs> Can yeah, we just all agree? Great can we just all agree if anyone sees a bag of Doritos, <laughs> that's the universal sign for I'm going upstairs wow. to watch Netflix. I'll see you in six hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you need to do that, then yeah. By all means. Around, bag of chips we'll, all the time. <laughs> we'll Wait a minute. Where did you get Doritos in in isolation? That's what I want to know. Grocery <laughs> day, gateway, man. Mm-hmm. And and hold on, Fred. I never said that I was doing this Doritos 
Netflix isolation. I just said, let's y'all all agree moving forward that if you ah. see your partner or spouse or child with a bag of Doritos walking <laughs> towards the TV, they just need a couple hours to themselves. I think that's a, that's a good sign. Good signal. I, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't know I think that's healthy yeah. healthy and, for everybody you know and Matt you just brought up something that I think is so important and it's if we can allow for opportunities to bring a little bit of humor into our lives mm -hmm. this in general you know I can under it is understandable that we take life so seriously there's a lot of challenging things that go on every day that being said the more that we can bring in some humor even just like put off, the, turn off the social media, be yeah. like, let's watch a funny show. Can we bring yeah. up the lightheartedness? You know, we don't like the, the worrying and the suffering is not going to make anything better. You know, right. we can worry all day long. It will not change the circumstances, but yeah. inviting some lightheartedness and some laughter in is going to make a difference. It doesn't change the circumstances, but it helps our emotional wellness. It, it boosts our immune systems. It helps our relationships. Um, so I think humor is really important. I know that that's, that can be challenging when this is happening, but there's little ways that we can allow for that to come in. So does that mean that we can ask Fred to stand up? <laughs> <laughs> Someone did no. just say Fred's hiding the Doritos. <laughs> Fred, Fred, stand up. No. Nope. Oh, Matt. Up. What? <laughs> business up top party at the bottom <laughs> so yeah. i'm not going to make fred stand up but fred is business up top i don't know rec recreation down below he's got shorts on he's got shorts on he's ready for gym class um, ready for gym I class <laughs> um, but i think that's the norm with zoom calls now that's but that's true. what I'm saying. I think that's fantastic. It is. Here I'm the here I'm the chump wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned. Lesson learned. <laughs> right? Lesson learned. Um, Farrah, do you have any other questions or? No, I think that I think the um. No, no. Well, I think uh, that's can it. I just say one one thing and just of to course. wrap up from the uh, mortgage side of things? Yes. Is that lenders are still lending? There is still, uh, you know, options out there for you. Uh, if you're renewing your mortgage, refinancing, whatever the case is, just pick up the phone, call your trusted uh, mortgage professional, and they will definitely help you out. There's, there's a lot of us out there, uh, a lot of great people that uh, would be really helpful uh, in your time of need. So do not hesitate. Do not wait. Make the call. And you'd be surprised most of them will answer on weekends and evenings as well, uh, like Fred. myself. So. How do, Just, how, do, how do people get a hold of you? Uh, they can email me at fred at safebridgefinancial.com or they can call me at 416-458-0610 uh, and either leave me a message or I'll probably answer the phone. All right. Thanks. And Chantel, any closing thoughts? And uh... mm -hmm. um, I know that conspiracy theories can be really interesting and, you know, like I enjoy conspiracy theories and some are, I believe in some of them, but <laughs> if you're already not feeling well mentally and you're noticing that you're not sleeping at night, you're feeling agitated, all these things, you know, maybe just let the conspiracy go, conspiracy theories go for a time and, you know, watch something that comforts your inner child. Okay. Mm. So, you know, maybe just like a movie from when you were younger, that feels fun. Listening to some, some music that you enjoy, just take a break from that. You know, even like, you know, some people are watching a lot of like murder mystery things right now. And like, just maybe take a break from it for a little bit. If you're really noticing you're feeling a bit unhinged, um, just to give yourself a, a, a break, some breathing room. So that's, that's my, great. that's my final <laughs> tip. Um, and and yeah. if um, if people are like now feeling the need to reach out to someone and mm -hmm. they want to reach out to you for a consultation or a Zoom call, um, or they want to ask you some questions or pick your brain or get some advice, how do people find you? Okay, so um, you can go to earthinsky.com. So there's my, my contact info is all on there. Um, you can email me at connect at earth and sky. 
Facebook.com. Uh, you can add me to Instagram or Facebook. You can message me on there. So on Facebook, uh, you can actually just add my personal account. I allow anyone to add me and my name on there is Chantel Dietrich. Um, on Instagram, it's earthandsky.enchanti. Um, and yeah, I offer free phone consultations and I, I'll I try to respond to people within 24 hours if you send me a message. Um, I offer sliding scale support as well. Um, and if you have benefits, that's an option also. So, you know, it, whether you need to just talk for a little bit or you need a full on ongoing support kind of thing, either one is available. And if I'm not the right fit for what it is you're looking for, I'll gladly help point you in the right direction to someone else that might be the right person for you. Because when it comes to counseling, it's important that we find someone that meshes with who we are. Um, and I know I'm just not the right fit for everybody. And I know some other people that, you know, I can uh, refer you to. So that's part of why I do as well as refer people and point them in the right direction. Awesome. Thank you. So for everyone watching, we are going to put Fred and Chantel's information uh, in the comments. So if you need to find them, we'll link them there. And other than that, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, thank yeah. you both for being here. Thank, thank you for you all that information and all your knowledge. You know, a lot of people are going to get a lot of value out of this. And um, that's what we're here to do. We're help, help shine a light on the problems that everyone's facing right now and help them get yeah. through them um, as best as we can. So thank you both so much. And for those of you that are watching this, feel free to follow us at Talk11. Yeah. Uh, you can find us at Talk11.ca, on Instagram at Talk11.ca as well. And of course, here on Facebook. And stay tuned for a lot more of these. So we'll be back Tuesday and Thursday next week. Um, do we know who's coming up next Tuesday? No. <laughs> I don't remember. Right. We got we got people though. We got There's people. lots of people. I don't remember who's next, but someone amazing, and we'll let you all know uh, before then. Fred, so have Chantel, a great night, thank everyone. You guys. Thank, thank you so much. much. See you later. Fun. Have a good night, guys. All right.